In this lecture, we will learn how to reduce background noise from audio. Removing background noise is a very popular topic among audio beginners. Some beginners also think if they can reduce the background noise, all the audio issues will be fixed. I will remove background noise from this recording. But before that, let's set our expectations right. This is the manual page for noise reduction in Audacity. You should try to understand what it says in the top section. Let me read some important lines from here. Noise reduction can reduce constant background sounds such as hum, whistle, whine, buzz, and hiss, such as tape hiss, fan noise or FM, webcast carrier noise. It is not suitable for individual clicks and pops, or irregular background noise such as from traffic or an audience. Be aware that it may be impossible to get a satisfactory removal when the noise is very loud, when the noise is variable, when the music or speech is not much louder than the noise or when the noise frequencies are very similar to those of the music or speech. All these words mean, the scope of noise reduction in Audacity is quite limited. We will learn how to utilize this limited scope. Eventually, I will share tips and tricks to get a recording where noise is minimal. The beginning of this track looks flat, but if I play the audio, you will see something in the meter. It is a small amount of noise, and you may hear nothing unless you are in a quiet place. It hit around minus 42 in the meter. There is a tiny dot in that line, and that is a mouth noise. I will explain later what mouth noise is. Mouth noise is not part of the regular background noise. The noise level will be less if I select the part before that dot. It is hitting around minus 45 in the meter. This noise level is in the raw recording, I have not processed the audio yet. If I add some kind of audio processing, this noise will increase. For example, if I apply an effect to raise the overall loudness of the audio, the noise will also increase. If you watched my previous lectures, you know Normalize can set the loudness of the audio to a proper level. So I will add Normalize effect on the audio. I will set the peak amplitude to minus 3. The audio has become louder so the noise. You can see the noise is now visible on the waveform. If I play the audio, the noise is better audible than before. The source of this noise is the AC unit in my room and a fan that is running below my floor. It is a kind of hissing noise, also called white background noise. I could have turned off the AC to prevent the noise, but the fan running downstairs is not in my control. It is in other people's apartments, and the vibration through the floor is causing this noise. The best thing I can do now is to reduce some noise using the noise reduction effect. Audacity has some built-in effects that can enhance your audio or fix some problems in your audio. Noise reduction is an effect that fixes noise issues. However, its capacity is limited and can only remove white background noise. If you have a regular background noise like traffic noise or dog barking, the noise reduction effect cannot remove that kind of noise. Let's see how the noise reduction effect works. Noise reduction is a two-step process. In step one, you have to select a noise profile. In other words, you have to select a part from the waveform which has only the noise. This part can be anywhere from the audio. It can be from the beginning, from the middle, or from the end. The main point is the selected part should have only the noise you want to remove from the overall audio. I will select a part from the beginning. Currently, I have one second of the waveform selected. Audacity does not require that much noise sample. Audacity requires only 0.05 seconds of sample. I will zoom in and show you how much the sample is that. It is a half second sample. If I zoom in further, I can select 0.05 seconds of sample. I have zoomed in quite a lot, and this is the 0.05 seconds of the sample. If I zoom out, you can see how small that sample is. It is almost invisible though I had the sample selected. Though Audacity requires a minimum sample of that length, I would recommend at least a half second sample. Because a larger sample gives Audacity the chance to recognize the noise better. I could have just said, select a half second of the noise sample. But I showed all these things to give you a feel how Audacity works. If you know this kind of thing, you can edit your audio with confidence. I will select half a second from the beginning and go to effect. Audacity effects are grouped by the kind of task they do. You will find noise reduction inside noise removal and repair. As I said before, noise reduction is a two-step process. You can see two separate steps here. In step one, you have to provide Audacity with the noise profile. Click on Get Noise Profile, and Audacity will use this noise sample to identify the noise. For step two, you have to select the audio from where you want to remove that noise. Usually, white noise is present all over the audio. So I will select the whole track and go to the noise reduction effect again. In step two, you have to configure the noise reduction settings. 
the actual configuration you can set for these sliders is quite limited. These are the default configuration, and you will get suggestions to use this default setting. However, the default settings have a drawback, it degrades the audio quality. In the default settings, the noise reduction value is 12 dB. The ideal value for noise reduction is 6 dB. It is the amount of noise to be decreased if the noise is found. A bigger value in noise reduction means more noise reduction, but that makes the sound harsh. So you should try with a 6 dB noise. If that does not work, you may try a 9 dB reduction. But remember that can introduce a bit of harshness in the audio. If more than a 9 dB reduction is needed on your audio, you have to rethink your recording strategy. How much noise is acceptable depends on where you are using the audio. I will go into that discussion in a later lecture. The next slider is sensitivity. The higher the sensitivity, the more aggressive the noise reduction will be. The lower the sensitivity, the less aggressive it will be in noise reduction. You would want the aggressive level to be just enough for noise reduction. The default sensitivity of 6 works perfectly fine. You have to change the frequency smoothing slider. After removing the noise, a gap is introduced in the audio data. Frequency smoothing tries to reduce that gap so that the audio sounds smoother. For voice recording, a value of 6 in frequency smoothing works fine. So the ideal configuration is a value of 6 in all three sliders. If you are doing high-quality voiceover, you cannot go beyond these settings for noise reduction. If you are doing podcasts or editing YouTube videos, you have some more flexibility. Let's apply this setting and see what it does. I will play the noise-only part which was around minus 39 before. After noise reduction, it has become around minus 45. So a 6 dB noise reduction happens. The main purpose of noise reduction is not the noise in the silent part. You have to make sure no noticeable noise in the spoken parts. Let's listen to the sound before noise reduction and after noise reduction. Audacity is a pretty good software for voiceover recording and editing. If you can get good recording, noise. Audacity is a pretty good software for voiceover recording and editing. If you can get good recording, noise free recording, then Audacity may be down. It seems no obvious noise in the spoken parts after noise reduction. So for spoken parts, the noise reduction was okay. However, the noise we are currently seeing in the silent part, even after noise reduction, is not okay for many platforms. If I apply a noise reduction of 12 dB instead of 6 dB, it will become close to meeting such requirements. If I apply noise reduction with these settings on the normalized audio, the silent part's noise will be less. However, the spoken words will be a bit harsh or hollow sounding. If you use a headphone, you may notice the difference. If you are listening to it with the speaker, the issue may not be obvious in the spoken parts. But it is there. Audacity is a pretty good software for voiceover recording and editing. If you can get good recording, noise free recording, then Audacity may be the only software. I can even try to apply a greater value in noise reduction on the normalized audio. For example, I will set a noise reduction of 24. If I check the silent parts, I will see no noise in the meter. Because the meter starts from minus 60 dB, and my noise falls below that. There is a tool in Audacity called a Spectrum Analyzer. You can access it from the Analyze menu. It will show the volume level by frequency. You can see there is some energy in some frequencies. However, the energy fell below minus 60 dB, so we could not see anything in the meter. If we listen to the audio, it will sound more hollow than before, or will give a feeling like it is stopping suddenly. Audacity is a pretty good software for voiceover recording and editing. If you can get good recording, noise free recording, then Audacity may be the only software you need to produce excellent final audio. In theory, noise reduction can reduce the noise, but practically it has some limitations. It cannot reduce noise without degrading audio quality. If you are trying to get very high quality audio, you cannot reduce noise by more than 6 dB. Other times like for podcasting or YouTube videos, you should reduce the noise to a level where it is not obvious. I will discuss later how to set up your environment for high quality recording. For now, experiment with different noise reduction settings and listen through a headphone. The more hissing noise you have, the harsher it will become with noise reduction. It is important to understand this concept. It is the foundation for getting excellent quality audio.